Betafly flashing process is changing. It's still pretty easy and it's bringing a couple of cool features. So let's talk about that. All of our regular fun stuff like expert call, some drama, some insights, how it works under the hood, how to flash legendary CAC mode with a new configurator. It's way easier now. All of that goes towards the end of the video. Now just pure information how to flash Betaflight. So you need Betaflight configurator 10.9, which hasn't been released yet, but will be pretty soon. For now, you can try release candidate of 10.9. The links in the description. First of all, you need internet connection to flash Betaflight, and it's been like this since like three years ago. After that, plug in your flight controller. Make sure you have the data cable, not just a charging one. And make sure you're plugging in your flight controller, not the DJI Air unit and not your radio, I've seen that before. You do not need to plug in the battery in your drone, no battery. You should be able to see your flight controller right here in the ports dropdown. If it's not there, don't panic, there are a few steps you can perform before freaking out. The first possible problem, your cable is not data cable or it's a bad one. In some rare cases you might need to disconnect some peripherals from your flight controller, for example GPS or some MSP VTXs. On Windows you can also try Impulse RC Driver Fixer, the link in the description. In some very rare cases you might want to open options tab and activate show all serial devices. Your last possible resort, try a different USB port or a different PC or laptop. At the end it could be just a bad flight controller with a messed up USB port for example. You can also check out firmware flasher wiki page troubleshooting section, the link is right here. Betaflight 4.4 hasn't been released yet, to try it out I have to use show release candidates and here select release and release candidates. After that click this beautiful auto detect button and Betaflight configurator should detect your flight controller type automatically. If it didn't detect it correctly then you have to use this drop down and do it manually like a guy from medieval ages. Make sure that this drop down shows exact version you wanna flash, it probably should be the latest or the latest release candidate. Unselect no reboot sequence. You need it if your flight controller is already in DFU mode, otherwise unselect it. Select full chip arrays and don't touch manual baud rate. Almost forgot to mention that it's a good practice before flashing to save your current configuration, so click connect and here on the presets tab save backup. You might need this backup if something goes wrong and you want to go back to the previous version of Betaflight that you have been using. After you select all of this here, scroll a little bit down and you'll see this new section Build Configuration. This is your control panel for the Betaflight Cloud Build System. It might look intimidating, but there is really nothing difficult. Most of people don't even need to touch anything here. Because the defaults should work for most of people for most of the common setups out there. Check that your radio protocol is selected here. If you want to use some weird, rare telemetry protocol selected here. I don't even know what half of these protocols are. Check out some other options here. For example, maybe you want 64 LEDs instead of standard 32. Or maybe you want magnetometer. This pre-selected options list might change in future, so just pay attention. And lastly, check the motor protocol. D-Shot is pre-selected, is the most common protocol these days. But if you have an old build, or for example, brush tiny whoop, everything is right here. Now you're ready to say hello to the Betaflight Cloud. Just click Load Firmware Online. And the Betaflight Cloud will start building your special firmware. In the best case scenario, it will take one or two seconds if someone else before you already built your flight controller with the same settings. If you are the first guy with these settings, with this flight controller and with this firmware, then this progress bar will make you wait for 10, maybe 20 seconds until it shows success. Just a reminder guys, fun stuff goes towards the end of this video, now this is just pure how to. I said how to. <laughs> if you see a timeout error here, you might might want to try load firmware online again. If you keep seeing an error here, then you can try classic mode. But don't abuse classic modes, because eventually they'll have less and less features as Betaflight development goes forward. The best thing you can do if you see an error here besides classic mode is to click show log. It will show you a bunch of nerdy stuff, so now you need to learn nerd language and translate it. Just kidding guys. Simply copy this link, open Betaflight Discord invite in the description, or Betaflight official Facebook page and just drop your question in the support forum or in the cloud build issues and don't forget to paste your nerdy link and maybe with the screenshots of what you have selected here and here. Average you should not see any errors here, so if you do, you're kinda special. Finally click flash firmware and then just watch this progress bar. Your flight controller should go to DFU mode and then start flashing. Flashing is done, click connect and then very very important you must click apply custom defaults. If you don't do this, 
pack your bags, you're going home. After that, you're pretty much done and you can start setting up your drone. You might see this warning, please don't freak out, it's actually so funny. I've seen so many people asking about what the hell is this warning, what I should be doing? And the answer is just... Just read it, come on. First one usually says that you need to select your motor output protocol and it's right here on the motors tab. And the second warning usually says that you need a calibrator or accelerometer and it's right there on the setup page. So read through all of that, understand, and it's actually not related to flashing anymore. If something goes wrong after you click flash firmware, for example you see an error here, or your flight controller doesn't go to DFU mode, then guess what? Correct! Don't freak out. Unplug USB from your flight controller and plug it back in. After that, if you are not able to use this connect button to connect to your flight controller, then you need to go back to the previous troubleshooting steps that we discussed at the beginning of this video. If you can connect to your drone, but it does not go to DFU mode automatically, thus you cannot flash it, then you can try setup page activate bootloader slash DFU button. DFU stands for Device Firmware Update, and it's a special mode that your flight controller should be in, in order for you to be able to flash it. So try to click this button, and then you should be able to see DFU right here at the top right corner. If you don't see this button, or if it doesn't work, then open CLI and type BL, click enter. Again, you should be able to see DFU here. If DFU mode still doesn't show up, you can try a boot button trick. Almost every Every flight controller has this little boot button. Press this button and keep it pressed. Plug USB while holding this button pressed. Release the button. And you can see your flight controller should go to DFU mode. This boot button trick is also useful if somehow you break your flight controller, for example if you unplug your USB while it's flashing. Then just use this boot button trick. Your last resort with DFU mode is Impulse RC driver fixer. Sometimes it can help you to send your flight controller into DFU mode. Just a reminder that you you need to go through all that only if your flight controller does not go to DFU mode automatically after you click flash firmware. Finally, your flight controller is in the manual DFU mode, so the only difference now for flashing is that now you need to activate no reboot sequence, and then just click flash firmware, apply custom default and so on. 7 minutes of video simply to explain how to flash beta flight. It does sound like too much, but I did try to cover all possible problems that you guys might have. Before we move to the main part, this is how quick the flashing process should be for the majority of people out there. Click update firmware, click auto detect, check that it's your flight controller and check the firmware version. Double check the build configuration for just in case. Click load firmware online. Wait. Click flash firmware. Wait. Flashing successful, click connect, apply custom defaults. And there we go. We've talked a lot today about clouds and cloud builds, so let me call to my cloud expert that this is the cloud. Rusty Storms here coming at you live from channel Race Band Day. We're going to be looking at our weekly weather forecast. Let's take a look. So the map here is showing this dense smog formation on the west coast, likely from too much DJI flying. And over here on the east coast, you can see this storm building. And let's take a closer look at it here. Zoom, zoom. Oh, wow. Mm. That's clear. You know guys, regardless of the fact that I'm pretty lazy, for some reason it takes me forever to make a single video. Hopefully it's gonna get easier for me as I get more experience. But so far it's been pretty consistent, about an hour for every two minutes of production. This video is going already for eight minutes, so yes, it took me about four or five hours to get to this point. Five hours of talking to Betaflight configurator, walking around my room and practicing what exactly I'm gonna say like a stupid so if you like to support whatever I'm doing on this channel, of course, like and subscribe now. And there is a Patreon link in the description with crazy amount 11 people and I appreciate each one of them. So how to flash special beta flight CAC mode in 2023. Make sure you enable expert mode right here, then select development. Click your regular auto detect button, select whatever version is the latest pre-release Zulu, scroll a little bit down and check all these fields here like you normally do. Find this select commit, click here and type K-A-A-C-K. Then just click load firmware online and flash like you normally do. No need to download and flash custom hex files like you had to do before to flash beta flight CAC mode. Just remember five letters CAC. With all due respect, boys, I'm about to do some flying! CAC! <laughs> CAC! <laughs> <laughs>
Wow, I'm speechless. Yeah! It's official. Alex gets his second win. Let's go, baby. Let's go, dog. In case you didn't know, Kek Mode is just a beta flight firmware with small but fun modifications that I've been adding over the time. For example, you'll be able to customize some of your OSD warnings, have a fancy post flight statistics, including your average throttle, how many times did you hit full throttle during your flight, and how much time did you spend there. Also, a quick OSD menu for racers, where you have a fast access to VTX channel changes, also motor limit, throttle limit, and forcing your lipo cell count so that you don't see this like land now every time you HV charge your batteries. Just a reminder guys that CAC mode is not for beginners, it's only for experienced beta flight users. It has some code that I'm not proud of. I install it on all my drones, but use it at your own risk. And remember about safety, I guess like with anything else in our hobby. So all this fancy beta flight cloud build system, of course it wasn't created just so that you could flash CAC mode. Some of the flight controllers like F411 or even F722 are pretty close to its memory limit with beta flight. Flight. Processing power is not a big deal, but lately it's been pretty rough on beta flight developers to keep support for all of the flight controllers because of the memory that source code for the new features occupies. Just think about that for a second. Beta flight 4.3, the actual compiled binary firmware, supports all the gyroscope types out there, all the motor protocols, including like the very old one, like multi shot and PWM, supports all the barometers, magnetometers, GPSs, and everything, all the beta flight flight code. And all this occupies memory on this tiny little chip. So eventually developers will have to remove some of the old features like Multishot for example. But some people are still using it. And here comes Mr. J. Blackman, our savior. He's an old Betaflight contributor. He's not old, he's just been contributing to Betaflight long time ago. He suddenly came up and implemented this cloud build solution that honestly I admire quite a lot now. I had a long video call with him and Mr. Zuck and J explained me all the little nuances about this new build system that I was interested in. First of all, nobody knows how Jay looks like. I try to make a screenshot, but the correct one was lost. You can see Mr. Zuck in the middle, and this is the only known picture of Mr. J. Blackman. There we go, we can try to zoom it in, but it's all we have. Damn, now if someone like Chris Ross are gonna take interview from him, they're gonna destroy my myth. Maybe they can still cover him with the pixels. The following nuances are not necessary to learn for the regular users, but I like to know a little bit more than regular users, but only like a little bit. I guess you are as well if you stay here. So once you click load firmware online, all of these parameters you put here, including your flight controller type and the beta flight version, goes to the fancy beta flight cloud build system developed by Mr. J. The cloud build system opens configuration file for your particular flight controller. There is a big repository with all the configuration files for all the flight controllers. For example, you've got Foxier F7 V2 flight controller. By the way, if you're still watching, leave the comment. I just want to know who you are. And now every flight controller configuration file has a list of installed hardware. So in this case, instead of supporting all of the gyroscope types, here we have only MPU 6000, also some black box flash memory type and analog OSD chip. And that was a huge community teamwork to add the exact hardware in every flight controller configuration file. So beta flight developers highly encourage flight controller manufacturers to open unified targets repository, find your flight controller and just double check these configurations. Because if something is off here, it's on you, dear manufacturers, but to fix it, it's quite easy. And this is why we need classic build mode, because if something is wrong here, then you can still flash with the old hex file that supports everything, all the gyros, all the like magnetometers and flash chip types with everything in there. So the cloud build system takes these parameters, combines them with these parameters you put here in the configurator and builds your personal beta flight with the only features that you need. If you click this show log, it actually shows you the command it's using to build your personal beta flight. For example, in this case, I asked cloud to build me a CAC mod. And here you can see at the beginning, cloud takes my pull request, one, two, one zero zero. This is a pull request I made to Betaflight repository. Probably this pull request will never get merged, but it's there just for the CAC mod. CAC is just a pseudonym for the pull request one two one zero zero, and you can use select commit 
hashtag 12100 instead of CAC and it's gonna be exactly the same. And if you are a beta flight tester and want to test some other pull request that hasn't been merged yet, here you just put hashtag and the pull request number instead of the old way downloading the custom hex files and weirdly flashing them. Also here you can see all of the other parameters that cloud build system uses. For example, this particular firmware will only support MPU 6000 and only DSHOT because that's what I selected here, DSHOT. You can also specify some custom defines, but that's mostly for developers or if you really know what you're doing. Also pretty nice that in the select commit you can specify RPM underscore spec that's supposed to make all of the spec drones very close to each other in terms of speed and performance. I don't know much about that yet, it's not my pull request. It's still under development, so you'd better ask around it in the Street League Discord. Mr. Sky says no and... I guess this is how he looks. These pseudonyms like RPM spec or CAC are being given to the forks only in special cases. So I don't know, I kinda feel special. Maybe we'll see more of these pseudonyms in future, but you know, you might consider making an actual pull request that is intended to be merged in the official beta flight. So the new cloud build system is free for everyone to use just like the beta flight firmware, but it's not free for the beta flight project because it it uses third-party cloud virtual machines and services. So every time you click load firmware online, it actually spends a few cents from the beta flight project. Of course, Mr. J made a few optimizations here. For example, if someone else using the same flight controller and the same parameters, then the system is not going to build it from scratch. Instead, it will use a cached version of the firmware. So this is a good time for reminder that you guys can become a beta flight Patreon or just donate some money on PayPal. It helps beta flight project a lot. All the links are here on the welcome page of the beta flight configurator. And in the description of this video, according to statistics, there are 8 to 10 thousand users of beta flight configurator a day. Imagine if half of them donates one dollar a month. And imagine if all of my viewers donate one dollar a month to my Patreon. Mmm, dreams. Interesting moment that the beta flight cloud build system source code is not open source, at least not yet. And it's completely fine, it's free for users and its source code is not using any pieces of the beta flight source code. And as far as I understand, if some other friendly FPV projects need to use similar build system, then beta flight projects is more than happy to share experience and the source code with them. That is it for today, see you in the next video. If I am not lazy. You can see the riding on the pavement. Young kids they're growing up in basements. Online, a whole new generation. I'ma make mine, so you better go take it. Always they need a new This is Neil's crappy quad. It's rolling. If we take a look here on the East Coast, no, I don't like that. When did you stop liking it? Well, I'm more like what didn't what I had run into not what I was gonna say first. I was about to not like what I was Yeah. Like I had just got <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit. <Okay. laughs>